Christy McBain is someone that I've known now for eight years. She impressed me the first time I met her down in Eden talking about the port. She impressed me even more the way that she was with her community each and every day during the bushfire crisis and ever since talking about the need for support for the community. Throughout this campaign, Christy McBain has shown herself to be a tireless advocate for the people of Eden Monero. She's articulate, she's principled, she's a warm, generous person, and she's someone who will bring enormous capacity to the national parliament. I'm very proud to have campaigned on behalf of the Australian Labor Party with Christy McBain. I've actually had a couple of questions asked in the last uh, 24 hours about how many times I've campaigned with Christy McBain. My only regret is I haven't campaigned every day because there have been other things on. Because every day that I've been standing next to Christy McBain, what I've learnt is more about her community, more about her passion, more about her commitment. She deserves to win this by-election because she's the best candidate. She deserves to win this by-election because only she stood with the community each and every day in their time of need. She deserves to win this by-election because Christy McBain is someone who will take their concerns, regardless of party allegiance, she will be a strong advocate. She will be a strong advocate within the Labor Party and within the Parliament to make sure that this community's needs not just get listened to, but that solutions be found. Because Christy McBain isn't interested in arguments, she's interested in outcomes. And it's outcomes that this community needs. Christy McBain. Thank you, uh, Anthony, and thank you for joining me today in Marimbula uh, on the 4th of July, where everyone will be able to uh, finalise their voting in this by-election. This by-election for me was about amplifying the voices of the region of Eden Monero. We have been hit by the triple whammy of drought, bushfires, and then the economic impacts of COVID-19. We've got people and businesses and industries that are doing it really tough right across this electorate. Yesterday I was at Wandella, which is west of Cabago, with Graham and Robin. They lost their home in the bushfires. Six months on, uh, they are living in a caravan uh, on their property and are going through the process uh, of recovery and rebuild. Today is a chance to send the government a message that six months on from bushfire, we shouldn't still be waiting for assistance. Today is a chance to send a message that businesses need help and they need a plan for the future. We cannot wait until September for the future of JobKeeper to come out. Today is a chance to send a message that our regions matter, that our regions will not be left behind. I want to be that advocate in Canberra for these people because it's a region I know, it's a region I love. I grew up here, I went to school here, run a business here. Uh, it's a region that I am really passionate about and one that I will put first every time. I want to be their voice in Canberra because it is really important for the future of this entire region that we actually start planning for their future. Planning positively. Our campaign has been overwhelmingly positive because we wanted to make sure that we just didn't heap negativity on a community that's doing it tough already. It needs to be positive because people need a plan, a plan for jobs, uh, a plan for the future of industries like tourism and hospitality, agriculture, uh, forestry. We need a plan to make sure that our kids can grow up and stay here into the future. Uh, I'm really hoping at the end of, the, end of today or tomorrow or next week, whenever it may be, uh, that we'll have an outcome, uh, a positive outcome that will lead a path for the future of Eden Monero. Uh, it's so important now. It's important uh, because of the issues that we've been through, but it's really important that we have somebody that's not afraid to speak up, not afraid to speak up during a by-election, not afraid to speak up to their colleagues in a party room and won't be afraid to speak up in Canberra. Uh, so I urge everybody to get out today. Uh, we need to send a message to this government that we will not be left behind any longer. So vote Labor today uh, and let's make sure there are positive plans for our future.
Thank you. Well, this is about the people of Eden Monero. I say this, I'm here on the ground in this electorate. I was on the ground in bushfire affected communities over the Christmas and New Year period as well. Um, I think this is really not about uh, individuals in terms of powerful people, whether it be the Prime Minister or the Leader of the Opposition. This is about people who don't have power. This is about people who don't have a voice. This is about the people of Eden Monero. It's about Robin. There in uh, Wandela, uh, just near Cabago, you know, home, lost, uh, nothing done for six months. Uh, this is about the beef farmers that we've met who haven't had support. The chook farmers struggling as well to get support. This is about people continuing to suffer uh, from uh, mental health issues six months after the fires. Uh, when I've been in Cormor and Cabago with Christy McBain and hearing about uh, the lives that have been lost, we know 34 lives were lost during the bushfire crisis. The truth is we don't know what the figure of lives lost is has been since the end of January. What we do know is that it continues to take a toll. And what we do know is that this is an opportunity for the people who haven't been heard to speak up through the ballot box and say, this government needs to do better. This government can't afford to leave people behind, not just in terms of the bushfire crisis, but during the pandemic as well. Those people who aren't getting job keeper, aren't getting job seeker. Those businesses who aren't certain about what their future is beyond the end of September. A government that was complacent after it won the election last year in May and has had complacency at its heart ever since, thinks that it just will drift through uh, this by-election. Uh, a government as well that is at war with itself. We've seen during this by-election campaign finish the way it began, with Liberal fighting Liberal, National fighting National, Liberals fighting National and vice versa. Uh, here, we've been very clear. On uh, the day that Mike Kelly told me he'd be resigning from Parliament, I had two words come into, into my mind straight away. They were Christy McBain as the person to represent this community. Uh, we uh, selected uh, Christy unanimously the day after Mike Kelly resigned from Parliament. Uh, she was the obvious candidate. She stood up for the community and fought for this community while the Liberals and Nationals have been fighting each other. Oh, look, oh, that's, a, that's a decision for him and uh, Prime Ministers are busy. Um, I respect that. Um, but uh, what I would say is that it's been six months since uh, he visited uh, Cabago. He never visited Marimbula or Naruma or the areas here that were devastated by the bushfires. I'd say to the Prime Minister, regardless of the outcome, regardless of the outcome today, come to these communities sit down with people and talk to them. Uh, go do what uh, Christy and I have been doing, Christy each and every day, and, and talk to them about these ongoing issues. Don't just say it's all okay. Go to the relief centre in Cormor. Go to the relief centre in Cabago. Talk to Danielle. Sit down with her and talk to her about the needs of this community because they are being left behind and a national government has responsibility to look after all of its citizens, not just some of them. Uh, look, it's obviously disappointing that there's been uh, the misinformation campaign. Uh, people will uh, make their decision in the ballot box how they wish to vote. Uh, I hope that that has no bearing on the outcome, um, but it is a, a blight on our democracy to see such misinformation campaigns going out. Look, I've been focusing on campaigning myself and trying to secure people's number one preferences. I haven't put too much thought into uh, how the emails may affect people's votes. Are you personally taken aback or surprised? Look, I 
Look, I understood during this campaign that there would be certain attacks uh, and negativity. Uh, for me, negativity is old school politics. As I said, people in Eden Monero actually need positive plans for their future. Uh, the disappointing part about those emails was the assertion made about uh, bushfire victims uh, and uh, more broadly my family. And uh, those things I don't think have a place in politics at all. Look, I'm, um, I'm buoyed by people around me. There are a lot of people out there really suffering at the moment and they've been suffering for a long time. It's, it's not just COVID-19 that has impacted communities like this. We've had cumulative disasters, an ongoing drought which has had a substantial impact right across the region. We've had the bushfire disaster which has had a substantial impact right across the region. And then on top of that's COVID-19. Now more than ever, um, people in Eden Monero need a spotlight on them. They, we need to amplify the voices. We need to tell the stories we're hearing, you know, 2F plus transactions in 2020 in its entirety, entirety for one business in Threadbo. Uh, a tourist evacuation zone that was on the coastal fringes of this electorate for weeks on end. So there has been no foot traffic, no tourists in our coastal regions for some time. So we've got businesses really struggling. We've got farmers that are struggling. We've got people really uncertain about their future with JobKeeper. What we need now more than ever is somebody that will stand up for them. So I will keep going until there are resolutions for people in Eden Monero because they need someone to keep fighting for them and that's what I'm going to do.